What's the best way to combine different movements to objects in a scene? How about using pegs or columns as pegs? And that's what we'll look at today, as we use pegs and columns to combine movements in OpenTunes. Hello and welcome to another OpenTunes tutorial. In previous tutorials I've shown how you can combine many types of camera movements using multiple cameras or multiple columns. And that's fine if you want to move the whole screen, but what about just parts of the animation? Here's where pegs and columns as pegs comes in. So here's a scene with two cars racing down the road and we want to add various movements into the animation. So the first one we want to add is the cars bumping up and down as they go along the road. We also want to add them moving of course left and right and backwards and forwards to overtake each other. And finally we might want to add one of other movements for instance driving through a pothole or jumping over a bridge or an object. Now we can do all of this in the one animation and we can add them all into the one column but it makes it difficult to edit and move them later. So for instance if you wanted to change the pacing of the race to overtake quicker or slower or to move them quicker or slower you'd have to bear in mind the other movements of the car. So what we want to do ideally is to add the movements as separate animation tracks. And we can do this using pegs or using the columns. If we take a look at using pegs first, so we can see on the stage schematic we've got the two cars and we've got the background road. So what we need to do is to add a peg bar and then attach the two cars to the bar so as well as animating independently the peg can be animated which will affect both cars. To do this you simply drag from the output of the peg to the input of each car can have multiple items attached to each peg and now if we move the peg it'll affect the two cars so simply select the peg you see on the stage that the peg is selected and we can move the peg up or down and the cars move with it so all we need to do is to place its position move to the next frame place it again and just keep doing this to affect the position of the peg. Then if you play this simple animation, you see the cars vibrating on the road. And if we go to the function editor and show the peg values on there, you can see the movement from east to west and from north to south. Now we don't want movement from east to west, which is left and right, just the up and down. And as we move through the frames, you can see the cars bouncing up and down. And you can edit this in the usual way by double clicking and just changing the values in each box or clicking the button at the top right and looking at the function curves editor. Again if you right click, choose fit selection, you can see the actual curves and the values. And you can edit them in here just by dragging them up and down to reduce them or to increase them. And then view the animation by dragging along the frame numbers. Now this kind of animation you want to be repeated through the whole scene so you'd have to highlight all of the values, do a copy, control C and then paste, control V into all of the frames that you'd like the values and that allows you to have the constant movement. But that's quite time consuming and if you extend the length of your animation you need to come back to the function editor and copy and paste the rest of the values. But if these values were in a column you could use the repeat function and not have to worry about the length of the animation, which we'll get to in a second. So back to the schematic, and what we can do now is we can add a second peg to add a further movement. So here's another peg bar, so move the output of the first one into the second and attach the cars into the second peg too. And this gives a chaining effect to the movement. So without changing peg 2, we can see that the animation is still the same here. We could now move to peg 2 and add further steps of animation. So for instance, from frame 7 we might have a, a large jump. So place an initial position for peg 2 and then come down a few frames and put a large jump in there. And as we move from frame 7 through to 11 you see the jump. And then down to frame 18, we can lower them again. So if we take a look at that, the cars are bouncing gently, then there's a large jump, 
and then they continue to bounce. But again, the movements are only visible in the function editor. So if you go to peg2 and just show the animated values, again we'll delete the east-west values, so we can only see the up and down movements. And you'll see it goes from frame 7 to frame 11 where it goes higher, and then lands down again on frame 18. Again, you can edit these in the function editor directly, or in the function curves editor. So we could change this value to zero, to start on the horizon level, and finish on zero to end on the same level. And in between, we've still got the large jump. So that's fine for the basics of adding movement, but ideally you want to be able to see these positions on the X sheet, and we'll do that by adding columns. So firstly, if you come back and delete the two pegs, so both cars attach straight to the table. And what we need to do is to add two columns, and we'll call this one Road Bounce. And we'll add a second one, and we'll call this one Car Jump. Okay. So in the same way that we attach the cars to the pegs, we now want to attach the cars into these new columns. So we'll attach the road bounce first to the car jump, and the car jump into both of the cars. There we go. And you can see the nodes chained together, so whatever movement you add to the road bounce, will be combined with the car jump, combined with each of the car movements. So let's take a look first at the road bounce. And what we'll do is we'll add the road bounce movements here. So move it up at one frame, down at the next, adjust at the next, and just keep changing it until you're satisfied with the movements. And you'll notice that the keys are added directly onto the X sheet. So you can select them later, adjust them, delete them, however you need to. You can still edit them in the function editor, of course. So the first thing we'll do is we'll rename the columns so we can recognize them in the function editor. Okay, so we'll show the animated values. And again, we'll delete the east-west because the car should just be bouncing up and down. Now the movements I made are quite large, so I will make them smaller in a second. But first, we'll extend the movements to the end of the animation. And by clicking the cycle button, we can do that. So now if we take a look at this, you can see the movement goes to the end of the animation. Now the movements are quite large, so we'll edit them to be smaller here. And you can do this directly by editing the numbers in the function editor or in the curves editor. So the first thing we'll do is we'll fit to the window. There we go. I'll make it slightly smaller so it can fit and see all six frames. So you can see the maximum height is 4.5 and the minimum is about minus 8. So we want a smaller bounce, so we'll just bring down the higher ones to something below 2 or so, and the lower ones up to negative 2 or so. There we go. So if we take a look at that. Now that bounce is quite fast, so what we'll do is we'll space out the frame slightly. So let's take a look at that. That's much better. So again, let's add a jump in the middle. So I'll select frame 12. And let's animate the position. The start position and then a maximum height. And back to a minimum height. And if we take a look at that on the function editor, we can remove any east and west changes I've made. And we can reset the first position to zero and the final one to zero, so it continues where it left off. And again, if we just show the animated, we can see we've only affected the north and south. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so that's added the additional jump onto the road bounce. So finally, let's animate the cars themselves. And as this is supposed to be a race, let's have one overtaking the other. So to make it easier to edit, I'll move the background backwards in the scene through the z-axis so we can move the cars backwards and forwards to overtake each other. 
I'm going to change the camera view and then change the size using the scale option to make sure it all fits in the view. So now let's edit the two cars. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm adding a new column to draw the ramp in so that the jump of the cars makes some sense. So I'm just positioning the ramp correctly so that it passes through the z-axis and the cars can move in front of it. And then it's onto the movement of the cars to make them move backwards and forwards and left and right on the road and overtake each other. Alright, let's take a look at that. Okay, so maybe that's not the most exciting car chase, but you can see how the three types of movement combine together. You can see the cars bumping along the road with the road bounce column. You can see the cars jumping in the air with the car jump column, and you can see the cars moving around the scene on their own columns. So that's how you can combine different movements on multiple objects in the scene. And I'll be back soon with another tutorial. And that's a guarantee.